You start to regret all your decisions. You hear screams and pleas for mercy everywhere around you. Houses are burning, children are crying. The black night sky painted with the red blood of your kin. Ra's divine punishment has begun. Running for your life, you see horrendous things. You finally found a vacant shelter where you could rest. However, that moment of peace quickly faded away as you heard heavy steps coming your way. The steps stopped and silence spread through the space. You tried to spot the creature, but no one was there. Was this really punishment for revolting against the sun god? As you pondered, you felt a hand on your shoulder. You turned around and saw a human with the face of a lioness. Ra was an ancient Egyptian deity of the sun and one of the oldest deities from ancient Egyptian folklore and religion dating back to the second dynasty. However, by the time of the fifth dynasty, his influence and following grew exponentially. Being the most central being in the ancient Egyptian pantheon, he was regarded as the creator of everything. His name, Ra, meaning sun, fits perfectly with the mythical lore around the god. It was believed that all forms of life were under the vision and creation of Ra. From the pyramid text, tomb wall artistry and writings dating back to the Old Kingdom have given us the most amount of information regarding the creation myths of Egypt. The sun god himself emerged from the swirling waters of the oldest Egyptian god Nun. From there he created all forms of life by calling them into existence by uttering their secret names. Ra then continued to mate with his own shadows and give birth to Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, goddess of moisture. It is worth mentioning that there are several versions of the creation myths and I highly encourage you to do some research on your own if you are curious. Out exploring the dark swirling waters of Nun, Shu and Tefnut were away for a long time. Anxious and afraid, Ra dispatched the Eye of Ra to search for them. In this myth, Ra shed tears of happiness when he got reunited with Shu and Tefnut. These tears would be the origins of men and women. The story continues as Shu and Tefnut made it and gave birth to Gebenot, god of earth and goddess of the sky. From them, the other gods followed after. Ra had great transformative abilities. This took form as merging with the other gods to become a special deity on its own. The different forms that he took depended on the situation. During dawn, Ra merged with the scarab beetle faced god Kefri. This form symbolizes the rebirth of Ra. During the day, Ra would be associated with his falcon headed form, merging with the sky god Orest. Ra had the appearance of a human with a falcon's head and a sun disk inside a snake. This was his most depicted form and was called Ra Horakti. The evening manifestation of Ra was known as his merging with the ram-headed god Knum. The form of Ra that created the world and life was Atum Ra. Like Ra, Atum were regarded as the father of deities and pharaohs and were widely worshipped. To keep things simple, Officially, Ra and Atum were two separate deities, however, Atum was essentially Ra only by another name. When it was sunset, it was believed that that was the moment that Ra died and went to the underworld. During the day, Ra sailed across the skies in a sun barge. By sunset, that barge turned into the evening barge also called the ship of a million souls. This ship is picked of newly arrived and judged souls to bring them to the paradise or field of reeds. By this time, Ra has assumed his new form, merging with Osiris, god of the underworld. 
As the barge sails through the underworld, it is attacked by the serpent Apophis that embodied chaos. Apophis' goal was to kill Ra and prevent the sun from ever rising again, casting the land of the living into chaos and despair. The gods and the judge souls on the barge have fired off the serpent. Every night, Aphophis attacks Ra, and every night he gets defeated. The souls arrive at their destination, and the sunrise was seen as Ra's victorious triumph, giving the Egyptians another day. Once upon a time, Ra himself ruled the lands of Earth. In the Book of Heavenly Cow, it is written down details on how Ra left Earth, how he ruled the lands, and then ascended to heaven. One tale tells the story of how Ra had begun to grow old, and thus the humans were plotting to overthrow the deity. When he caught wind of this, he got upset and called the councils of the other gods. During that meeting, the gods convinced the sun god that the humans needed divine retribution for the ingratitude. Ra then summoned the legendary Eye of Ra, a powerful force often associated with the goddess. In this story, Sekhmet, daughter of Ra, was now sent to act out his vengeance. Depicted as a lioness, she slaughtered thousands of humans. Finally, after his rage subsided, he understood what mistake he had made and asked Sekhmet to stop. However, by that moment she was now unhinged and continued the rampage. As a solution, Ra ordered 7,000 jugs of beer to be dyed red so they could resemble blood and poured it on the plains of Dandera. Sekhmet drinks this blood beer and passes out. As she wakes up, she reverts to her more pacified form, Hathor, and swore herself as a friend of humanity henceforth. Order was highly valued in the ancient Egyptian society and was designed and controlled by the king. The ruler, in this case the pharaoh, was thought to have divine blessings for their ability to keep order as head of state. The founder of the fifth dynasty of the old kingdom, King Yusurkaf, was an avid worshipper of Ra and encouraged his subjects to follow Ra's values thus elevating the sun god's popularity and influence almost to the point of monotheistic state religion. The period during the 5th dynasty was well known for the building of the sun temples, symbolizing the firm connection between monarch and god. Yusurkaf and his successors referred themselves as sons of Ra and were thought to be literal children of the god. Ra was already the king of the gods, but now he also was known as king and father of the king. Today, Ra remains as one of the most worshipped gods from ancient Egypt. Having built temples in his honor and standing as one of the most powerful and influential gods from the ancient Egyptian religion, Ra established his legacy for years to come. Emerging from the dark swirling waters of Nun, creating something out of nothing and becoming the most worshipped deity by the 5th dynasty. Having transformative powers that enable him to take different shapes and merge with other gods like Osiris, Horus and Atum, sailing through the skies at day and diving into the nether realm at night, fighting an ancient serpent Aphophis in a battle of survival and having an arsenal of weaponized gods as his eye of Ra that will carry out his vengeance at will. All this combined makes Ra easily one of the most interesting and powerful gods from ancient Egyptian religion. So remember that when you see the sunrise, Ra has won his battle against Aphophis yet another time and given us another day to live. As the day passes, he sails on his sun barge as Ra Rakti, then eventually goes to the underworld at sunset, preparing yet another time for his battle against the ancient serpent, giving us night. 
Hi, thank you again for watching and making it to the end of this video where we explore the lore around the legendary sun god Ra. If you have any suggestions for video ideas, feel free to comment down below. I wish you all a blessed morning, day, evening and night. The world is always full of mysterious and interesting topics. Stay curious.